All right, stop, collaborate, and listen. I sit back with my brand new invention. Welcome to Watch Mojo. And today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 instances where artists who are known for primarily one song were perhaps arguably caught red handed with somebody else's material. I ain't afraid of no ghost. For the record, the ripoff songs in question don't necessarily need to be the big hits. And we also realize that some of these artists either have retained critical acclaim or have earned chart success in other countries. However, their public profile should be primarily connected to one huge hit. If you like what you're hearing, be sure to check out the full song at the link below. Number 10, The Verve, Bittersweet Symphony. It's a bittersweet symphony that's this crossover smash single by England's The Verb hinges upon one very noticeable sample within its arrangement, a sample that wasn't cleared with enough parties beforehand and resulted in a major copyright lawsuit that destroyed band morale. Change, Jack, and change, Jack, and change, Jack, and change. The song in question was Bittersweet Symphony, and it sampled the Rolling Stones. But there's a catch. The sampled material is actually taken from a cover version of the Stones song, The Last Time, performed by the Andrew Oldham Orchestra. This otherwise arcane point of reference is probably lost on listeners and fans of The Verb, but it most certainly was not lost on former Stones manager Alan Klein, who was successful in his litigation. Number 9, Two Live Crew, Pretty Woman. Live Crew may be best known for their late 80s hit, Me So Horny, but there was another song whose ripoff status may be lesser known to fans. In fact, the song was so controversial that a case surrounding it went all the way to the U.S. Supreme Court. Woman. Girl, your hair will grow. Woman. The case Campbell vs. Acuff Rose Music Incorporated references the Two Live Crew track Pretty Woman, which was a parodic ripoff slash retelling of the Roy Orbison classic Oh Pretty Woman. Two Live Crew were turned down by Acuff Rose Music during their initial clearing phase for permission, but recorded and released the song anyway. The resulting legal victory for Two Live Crew helped further cement parody as a viable form of artistic expression. Ooh, pretty woman. Number 8, De La Soul, transmitting live from Mars. Écoutez, à midi. Quelle heure est-il? Il est midi. The legitimacy of sampling within hip-hop music endured an uphill battle as the genre gained popularity in the 80s and 90s. As a result, not every artist appreciated having their music used without their authorization and attempted to sue for royalties or songwriting credits. Quelle heure est -il? Quelle heure? Quelle heure? De La Soul sampled You Showed Me by the Turtles for their song Transmitting Live from Mars. You showed me how to do exactly what you do. The classic rock group sued for damages and the case was settled out of courts. The question remains, however, should De La Soul be labeled as ripoffs for stealing the Turtles' music without permission, or does the reuse of that music then constitute a new form of art unto itself? It's a valid discussion that rages to this day. Number 7, Men at Work, Down Under. The moral behind the construction of this next song may be, watch from where you steal musical inspiration. It may come back to bite you in the butt. Come from a love, love, love. Greg Ham and his bandmates from Men at Work found this out the hard way when it came to light that Ham nicked a bit of the Australian children's tune 
Kookaburra for the group's smash Down Under. Kookaburra sits in the old gum tree. It took until the year 2007 for the similarities between the two songs to come to light, but that didn't mean that the publishers of Kookaburra weren't out for blood. They successfully sued for back royalties to the tune of 5%, dating back to 2002. Number 6. Gnarls Barkley, Crazy. I remember, I remember when I lost my mind. Some of the best sample sources can be taken from obscure places. Well, at least obscure to the average listener. Diehard fans of Italy's spaghetti western genre likely knew immediately that Gnarls Barkley ripped off a catchy little melody from a film soundtrack. And all the truth. The movie in question was Viva Django, a.k.a. Django, Prepare a Coffin. Crazy is musically indebted to the sort of atmosphere present within these scores, and copied so much from Viva Django that composers Jan Piero and Jan Franco Reverberi received songwriting credit. It's the sort of earworm that you won't be able to ignore once you hear it, and we hope that, somewhere, a Gnarls Barkley fan was inspired to check out some of these badass old westerns. Maybe we're crazy. Number 5. Terry Jacks, Seasons in the Sun. Why do you, my trusted friend? Some of the best songs go through multiple hands before they become hits. Seasons in the Sun was actually written and performed multiple times, including by Jacques Brel, who adapted the Belgian song Les Moribots for his version in 1961. On était pas du même bord. Years later, Terry Jacks would take this hand-me-down Seasons in the Sun all the way to the bank in 1974 for his career-defining hit. Goodbye, Michelle, it's hard to die. Fans of the Canadian singer-songwriter probably have no idea that this version was also recorded, but initially unreleased by the Beach Boys as well. We had joy, we had fun, we had seasons in the sun. Not too bad for a Belgian song that became a French song that then traveled to America and Canada for chart success. But the wine in the song like the seasons have all gone. Number 4. Baja Men, Who Let the Dogs Out? Who let the dogs out? <laughs> You might not think that a one-hit wonder as innocuous as Who Let the Dogs Out could possess such a convoluted and complex backstory, but here we are. In fact, there's been an entire documentary made about how Who Let the Dogs Out doesn't belong to Baja Men or anybody else, really. Well, the party was nice, the party was bumping. Hey, what is known is that the copyright ownership is ridiculously convoluted, with many agreeing that the hook dates somewhere back to 1959. Fingers are pointed and hands are raised as to who exactly is responsible for that call-and-response refrain everyone recognizes. But one thing's for sure, the most famous version is certainly not an OG. Number 3. Ray Parker Jr., Ghostbusters. Something strange in the neighborhood. Who you gonna call? Ghostbusters! Let's get one thing out of the way. Ray Parker Jr. has most definitely achieved chart success away from his smash title theme to Ghostbusters. However, his public profile is almost indelibly connected to this tune, with many laypersons on the street probably struggling to name one of these aforementioned hits. Seeing things running through your head, who can you call? Ghostbuster! One person who just might have a beef with Parker Jr., however, is Huey Lewis, who was initially contacted to write a theme back in 1984. <laughs> Lewis claimed that Parker Jr. utilized the arrangement of I Want a New Drug for Ghostbusters and sued. I want a new drug. Want the woman made me sick? Want the woman made me crash my cup? The pair settled out of court, but Parker Jr. would later sue Lewis for breach of confidentiality. It's all a mess, but we want to know. Do you hear the similarity? I think you better call Ghostbusters! 
Number two, Robin Thicke, Blurred Lines. If you can't hear what I'm trying to say. You may know about the lyrical controversy behind Robin Thicke's Blurred Lines, but did you also know that there were some alleged musical shenanigans going on behind the scenes as well? It all depends on how you look at it, because Thicke knowingly admitted to being inspired by Marvin Gaye's Gotta Give It Up when writing Blurred Lines. The gay family successfully sued for royalties, but it brings up a deeper question. Does musical inspiration count as theft? Every artist is influenced by someone, yet it's up to the songwriters in question to differentiate themselves enough to justify the new material's existence. Or maybe the courts just got the decision wrong with this one. You decide. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Vanilla Ice 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 Baby it's true, a lot of people might know the story behind Vanilla Ice's Ice Ice Baby, but you could be hearing it for the first time if you're not a 90s baby. And I'll glow to the extreme, I rock a mic like a vandal, light up a stage and wax a chump like a candle, dance! It's pretty much become common knowledge by now that Ice heavily adapted Queen and David Bowie's Under Pressure for this hip-hop hit. Specifically, it's John Deacon's iconic bass line from this aforementioned Queen song that gets manipulated for Ice's big moment in the sun, albeit given an extra ting here and there. That said, youthful fans of Vanilla Ice might have been unaware that this Queen jam was heisted for Ice Ice Baby. That is, until they grew up and realized they'd been bamboozled all along. I kick my juice. If there was a problem, yo, I'll solve it. Check out the hook while DJ revolves it. Ice, ice, baby. Feel like debating sample viability or one hit wonder status? Hit us up in those comments below. Pitchforks and torches, optional. Come as you are, as you were. Do you agree with our picks? Let us know in the comments. And hey, if you're a fan of the song playing right now, be sure to check out the music video for it right here.